Hello, Keith again. So today I'm going to talk about how to respond to reviewers' comments. So what I recommend you do is take all the comments, break them down into a list, individually label each comment, one, two, three, and so on. And then we're going to respond to every comment. You want to try and do, where possible, what the reviewer asks you to do. And remember, you're trying to make the editor's life as easy as possible and convince them that you've changed the manuscript in such a way that it's now suitable for publication. So let's make the editor's life as easy as possible. And sometimes that's going to be a little bit of extra work for you, but the easier it is for them, the more they're going to understand what you've done, get them on your side and get your paper published, which is the aim of the game. So I'm going to use an imaginary paper um, to illustrate what kind of reviewers' comments you may, might get and how we deal with the different types. So let's pretend I've submitted a paper called Why Cats Are Better Than Dogs? A Global Approach to Pet Ownership. I've received the reviewers' comments and now I'm getting ready to uh, put together the document that compiles all of my responses together. So at the top of the document, we're going to say what the um, you know, the article is, and probably put the code number, the, the reference number for the article. And then what we're going to write at the top so the editor understands what our approach is, is please find listed below our responses to all comments received from the reviewers. And because sometimes we're going to have comments where it's associated with specific line numbers, if this is the case, we're going to also put the sentence where appropriate, the location of the associated edit is shown by line number, brackets L, in the revised manuscript. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for the editor. So let's look at the different kinds of comments. So the first kind of comments are actually comments where you don't have to do anything, but I'm still going to list them so the editor sees I have responded to every comment. I'm not hiding anything, it's just easy for them to see that everything has been, that has been asked for has been done. So here's an example, comment one. This study looks at pets' behavior using a new methodology. So we simply say, no action necessary. And this is perfectly acceptable. And then sometimes, if we're lucky, they'll say something nice about the paper. So we could have comment two, this is a worthwhile study and well-written paper in this research area. And in response, let's just say, no action necessary. And we thank the reviewer for this positive comment. Easy. So let's move on to comments where actions are actually necessary. So the first kind of comments that you will get is just a broad comment about the whole of the paper, sections of the paper. Um, and an example could be, the manuscript needs further editing with some sections containing uh, incomplete sentences. So we just give a general response as well. The whole manuscript has been improved, edited, and proofread. And this is perfectly acceptable. We don't have to say all of the different sections where we've gone through and we've changed it and improved it, line number by line number, section by section number. The editor just wants to know you've gone away and sorted the paper out because that's what they, the reviewer has asked you to do. So the next kind of comment is where the reviewers talked about a specific line number or section number. So an example could be, Comment four, line 100 to 120 in the results belongs in the discussion. So we'd move it and then we're just going to tell the editor where we've moved it to so they can check we've done what we've been asked to do. Line 100 to 120 has been moved to the discussion, line 210 to 220. Simple. Now the next kind of comment will be sometimes different reviewers ask you to do the same thing. So the previous one about uh, moving line uh, 100 to 120 has been asked again. So for the second time it's done, all we do is simply put, also requested by reviewer two, see response to comment four. The editor's happy. As long as you've evidenced where you've done something, that's the main aim. The next kind of comment is sometimes where you've re-edited, restructured, improved a, a manuscript, where the reviewers ask you to do something, 
the sentence or section has actually just disappeared. This isn't a problem. Uh, you just say that the sentence has gone. So an example for this would be comment 6, line 201 to 202, unclear whether the editors are talking about cats or dogs. You've got rid of the sentence, so you just put this sentence has been removed during editing of the manuscript. And as a result, the sentence is no longer in the manuscript. And this is perfectly acceptable. The next kind of comment is where two reviewers' comments contradict each other. So if we look comment 7 and comment 8, we can't do the same thing. So comment 7, figure 1 is unnecessarily removed. Comment 8, figure 1 should be improved by adding data on the number of daily cat-human interactions. So we can do what the first reviewer suggests or the second reviewer suggests. If we do what the first one suggests, where it's removing the figure, we simply put this. Figure 1 has been removed in agreement with comment 7. We have therefore not edited the figure as suggested by comment 8. We consider our approach to these conflicting requests to be the most suitable because the results were not integral to our main findings. So we've gone and explained why we've taken this approach. And then, what you're always trying to do is, sometimes the editor is the referee of the referees. So we're saying, we want to say to the editor, but if you don't think what we've done is correct, we're happy to do what you say. We're happy to take your advice. So we'd add, if the editor considers this the incorrect approach, we are of course willing to edit figure one in agreement with reviewers for comment. So we're saying, do you like what we've done? If you don't agree with it, we're happy to see what you think is the best approach. And then to the second reviewer, we'd simply put C response to comment seven. So what would you put if you did what the second reviewer asked you to do? I mean, it's quite similar, really. For the first one, I'd say C response to the second one. So C response to comment eight. And then the comment eight response would be, we have added the number of cat human interactions to this graph as we consider this the best way to present our results. And the improved graph supports our discussion in relation to how pets relate to owners. And then we put the line numbers so they can have a look at and see if they agree. Uh, we have therefore not removed the figure as suggested by reviewer three, comment seven. We consider our approach <clears throat> to these conflicting requests to be the best for the paper again but if the editor considers this the wrong approach, we are of course willing to change the manuscript to reflect Reviewer 3's comment. So, editors the referee. And I would say I've done this in almost every um, response to reviewers that I've had to do, and the editor has always just simply um, gone along with what I've said. I've never actually had a discussion with the editor about what the best approach is, but we're keeping them on our side my sort of diffusing conflict. Now the next kind of comment is one where you fundamentally disagree with what the reviewer has said. So here's an example. I've said, uh, cats do not meow, they bark. Please change throughout the document. Now we know that this is wrong, our results have shown this is wrong. So how do we address this kind of comment? Here's my suggestion. We have not changed the manuscript as we consider that reviewer has misunderstood our data. See figure one. So what we're not doing here is, I'm not trying to create conflict, I'm trying to diffuse it. I'm just simply saying in a really uh, polite way, they're wrong. But not just they're wrong, no, they've misunderstood the data, go and have a look at this and I think this should help. And what you have to remember here is reviewers they don't know the, the manuscript as well as you do. You've lived, you know, you know, you've lived, eaten, breathed this manuscript, you know, inside out, upside down, back to front. So you understand all the subtleties of what you've done. A reviewer will take an afternoon or a morning to do this. You know, they do want to do it properly. They're trying their best, but they're not going to spend a couple of days really, really, um, you know, getting to grips with the paper, they're, they're just going through it, jotting down some comments, putting them all together, sending them back to the journal to help improve the paper so it's more likely to be cited. 
So sometimes they're going to slightly misunderstand what you've said. So don't really go for their jugular. Just accept that maybe they've misunderstood it a bit and, and put down just clearly and calmly why you've taken the approach you've had. And then sometimes you might want to show that other studies back up what you've done. So other studies have shown our approach to be correct, Felix and Fido, etc. And, and again, we're using the editor as the referee. So we're putting, and if the editor considers our response incorrect, we are of course willing to consider their advice on this matter. So the manuscript can be edited where considered necessary. Let's diffuse that conflict. So the last kind of comment I'm going to talk about is one where you, you disagree with what the reviewer says, but it's actually kind of a minor edit and it's not a huge change. So I'm always thinking about diffusing conflict, making it easy for the editor. So instead of simply saying something is wrong, this would be the approach I would often take. So the reviewer has said, line 300 states, this study shows cats are better than dogs due to their independence. This statement is misleading and must be changed. Now, what I would say is I would take this sentence and I would change it to something like, overall our study considers that in the context of independence, cat ownership generally offers advantages currently unavailable to dog owners. Instead of previously, I'd put, this study shows cats are better than dogs due to their independence. So what have I done with these two sentences? Really, I haven't changed overall what I'm saying. I've toned it down a bit. So I've, it's like I've listened to the reviewer's comment, but I'm still going along with the spirit of what I want to say. I'm just kind of trying to find a way of incorporating their criticism without changing what I've said. And then in the response, I will say, line 300 has been edited to clarify our findings. So with this approach, you're showing the reviewer's uh, comments are appreciated. You've made a change, you still say your main message, the editor can approve your change and everyone's happy. And what's important to remember about this approach is if you go through your comments and all of your responses where you have a bit of a disagreement with a referee about what you should do and you just say, I'm not doing this, the referee is wrong, I'm not doing this, the referee is wrong, for minor points, not fundamental points, minor points, the danger is you may win the battle but lose the war, i.e. you've shown that you are right and you've justified what you've done and that, you know, that's really good for you, but your paper doesn't end up being published because all you're doing is disagreeing with the reviewer. You're making it really challenging for the editor and a lot more work for the editor to work out what it is. The reviewer may be far more senior than you and the editor's going to go along with what the reviewer says and just reject your paper. So, think carefully how you respond to these comments. It's the editor you are trying to convince, not the reviewers. And the last thing I would do is, where the reviewers have made substantial comments, i.e. more than just a few minor edits, I would recommend that you acknowledge them in your acknowledgement section. The reviewer is trying to improve your paper. An improved paper gets more citations, it's more readable. So the work that they are doing is really valuable, I mean really valuable. So acknowledge them, because if your paper gets accepted, soon you will be a reviewer. And I'm sure that you would like to think that that free work you are putting into someone else's uh, manuscript is worthwhile. So I hope this has helped and if you have any comments or topics you'd like me to cover in the future, please leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do to help. And like, subscribe and thank you for your time.